We're, we're going to begin the September Stormwater Management Advisory Committee meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, the first thing that I um, want to note that uh, we just received the resignation of our vice chair, Paul Bergmeier, and uh, just wanted to note that and thank Paul, Paul for all his hard work and uh, he's done lots of research and, and spent a lot of time putting together budget spreadsheets and uh, researching our rebate program and uh, I want to thank him for that and now that um, or we no longer have a vice chair uh, uh, take nominations uh, to uh, for do, a vice chair. Do we have to have a vice chair or can we just reappoint at the end of the year? Because we may want, we're, we're going to need to fill the spot. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if we're necessarily obligated to. Um, I would recommend that the, if it, with all due respect that you do so that if the chair is unavailable you have your vice chair and then come january when you reorganize you can pick your new chair and your new vice chair it would start with a nomination of somebody no no one wants a volunteer here uh, regina would you like uh not if nobody not wants it i'll do it but i'd like if Ch mm -hmm. regina and Charles would like to do it because they haven't yet. I, I think I'll pass. Thanks. Okay, then uh, nominate Heather. <laughs> I hate to see the vacancy. And Are we calling vote. The vote. Oh, do we need a second? Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations. Um, we do not have the meeting minutes uh, for all this meeting prepared yet and nor do we have Pat patricia tonight so uh, unfortunately it's just me <laughs> so we'll move on to public comment if nope and seeing there is none uh we'll move on to the uh budget recommendation discussion um while, while we made some recommendations back uh, earlier this year um, uh, it, it's it's also I guess the time of year where uh, Steve and the staff are going to be putting together the the budget items, and uh, Steve uh, has some items for our consideration. Thank you, Madam Chair. So what I what I provided to the Stormwater Management Advisory Committee are two sheets. The first longer spreadsheet is the original PRP at twenty three million dollars. Um, so obviously, so actually this is what went into DEP because this was the public comment PRP, but we need to pare that down to fit within our budget. The smaller spreadsheet at 6.1 million uh, takes care of 98% of our load requirements. So we'd still need to do another project or meet with DEP. And I provided both of these for the committee and there's also a third sheet which shows that the 6.1 million takes us to 98.3 percent of what we need to be um, we, we do have projects on the books so to speak that are still in design you have uh well you know banbury is going to be discussed at the next board of commissioners meetings we have the high view outfall we have the maplewood outfall um, on, on that end and then these are all prp projects so I, I thought I'd give you both if you want to mix and match and come up with something else. If you want me to uh, take one and put it in a five-year plan, I would love to hear your and, and very strongly request how you think we should manage flood mitigation projects along with the PRP, you know, considering you're looking at $6 million. We take in roughly a million dollars a year in revenue and there's round numbers roughly three million dollars in the bank so to speak but there are projects underway so uh 
I can do this, or you, I mean, I can do this at your direction in any way you want me to, or you can tell me what you want, and I will put it in a spreadsheet uh, for the manager, and I would give that back to everybody. We are in, so basically, we didn't do the stormwater budget because we wanted to wait till Swim Act, because most of our other things are in sanitary sewer, uh, transportation, all those good items. I know Mr. Bergmeier, before he had resigned, had noted uh, Paul is actually in one of our comments in the PRP as Paul Bergmeier, not as a Swim Act member. Uh, and his concern was using funding this entirely from the stormwater fund. And we all know that it, it's absolute priority that we, we try to get grants. Uh, I think a lot of these projects are good candidates, but then again, there's 1,984 other townships that should have good candidates too for these grants, right? We're not the only ones with great projects because everybody's got a PRP. Uh, but we will try for grants. We go to the board, we, we request permission, and, and then we go for them. But I, I don't know how much funding we're going to receive from them, realistically. Uh, I think it, it would be a good idea if we were to consider joining with that um, collaborative alliance of the, it's, I think it's the, is it the um, Darby Creek watershed? Because they've been successful in getting a lot of grants. So is that something that we could have someone um, at the township get involved with that? Steve, do you, you're familiar with them, right? I am. And so, as you know, these projects, I didn't, they're all broken down on the big maps by watershed. So we could get with the Darby Creek Watershed Alliance for projects that fall within that watershed. Darby Creek is an impaired stream in the township. Uh, that, that's one little corner, or one corner, if you will. Um, there, perhaps there's others that take in bigger areas. Uh, that might be a way to go. That might be something to look at on the joint Haverford Radnor comprehensive plan. True. Is Haverford a member? I don't know, but I think Darby they might Creek be. runs through them, so I think I've they might think be. that they, they have to have some involvement. But that to me that would be a, a definite go to. And I, I want to just say publicly, we'd like to thank Regina. She has volunteered to be uh, on the steering committee along with uh, Tammy Cohen, uh, one of our commissioners, myself, to be on the uh, Radnor Hereford Joint Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. Thank you. I guess my other um, thought on that was um, if Radnor Township could consider having some alternate engineers on, uh, not on retainer, but qualified to do work when we have small projects so that we don't have to necessarily use an RFP process for small projects, uh, an engineer for small designs, and a a few contractors for small projects because if we can get them on board, they can see obviously that there's enough work for it to be worth their while, but breaking them down as we're able to fund them and, and permit them rather than having to bundle them to get a cost savings, maybe what we would do is just have some pre-qualified uh, consultants and construction firms we we do that now with the consultants so when the board of commissioners tells us to go to rfp that's one thing we go to rfp on the smaller projects uh i i use some of the firms if you guys remember uh the, the swim act was involved when we picked tnm for banbury i used some of those firms i had told them and meloria was one of them i said you know based on our conversations you're, you're pre-qualified because you wouldn't be here on our short list if, if we didn't. So I have done that with some, with some projects. And if the board allows it, I do that. The one thing on the contractors is a little tougher because once the contract goes above $25,000, it's a sealed bid contract. So we can't, it, it just goes out. It's a public bid, we do it on pen bid. If it's under $25,000, there are times based on the contract, I would get three valid prices or two valid prices, and then I go to the Board of Commissioners and they can award it without going to sealed bid under 25,000. So depending on the size of the retrofit, we do know contractors, there's contractors 
that have morphed into specializing into this work, and they do a lot of it, and they're good at it. Uh, but again, it's all on that price. So if it's over $25,000, that's going to preclude us from having a specific list. If it's under, we have a, a definite group of folks that can do this amongst a lot of other work. Is that 25000 something Radner has established, or is that just a... That's in our home rule charter. Okay. So in regard to the PRP projects, uh, I, I think that we should get going on, on the detention basin uh, projects that we discussed a little bit earlier that uh, the legal end of those is going to be the the big sticking point in coordination with the HOAs the design and construction is not so much a, the the big time suck there if, if you were to graph the five-year capital plan on the PRP year one is going to have minimal spending because well I shouldn't say minimal there'll be legal fees but we're going to be approaching various HOAs some more functional than others uh, to do work on their basins you don't want to put, my recommendation would be that you wouldn't want to put too much up into design until you get a feel from that HOA that it's a positive project because you don't want to spend that money on a project that might sit for a few years. So there's going to be a good part of the first year of approaching HOAs, speaking to them, uh, having our attorney speak to them, I'm sure having their attorney go back and forth. And if we, if we get positive feelings, then we start going on some preliminary designs, which then we could go for grants with, possibly. But uh, I, I would envision the first year minimal construction would take place on these basins. Just, just reaching them, I mean, I, I've encountered in the townships I've worked for, the uh, leadership changes, we don't necessarily know that. And then, you know, you have to find out who is the, the board president, reach out to the rest of the folks, get them together. Um, I mean, there's a lot of carrots that would make them want to do this. We would take over, you know, I would assume we would take over maintenance of the basin. We'd have to do that. It would look nicer than most of them do now, right? It would be planted very nicely. You saw the slides Molly Ora showed us. Uh, that was one in East Whiteland Township that was a mowed basin. It looked like grass. I mean, it was looked like grass that was very nice, but now it's, you know, planted with wildflowers and other, you know, it's just a matter of keeping the invasives out. So. But I, I would envision year one is pretty slow on the construction side, other than uh, the Ithan Creek Stream Bank restoration, where we have some bond money for that because of the wall. It's actually in the parks portion of the bond money, and that would play well together with what we have to spend for the rest of it. So uh, when I met with Meliora, we basically took from Bryn Mawr Avenue to Clyde Road for those stream banks. Uh, the, the bond money wasn't for that length of time, but that's township property. So that's one you could get started on immediately in, and, in year one. And that was going to be my question. Like, if, if you look at the basin retrofits, it looks like most of them are HOAs, except for the ones that are either a subsurface infiltration, like at Bo Connor Park, Warren Philippone. Oh, that's stream restoration. I guess the challenge here is that our assignment when they formed this committee was to do flood reduction. So stream restoration is a great BMP. And when DEP put together the program for these pollutant reduction plans, it's as if they geared and wanted to steer everyone towards the stream restoration because that was the biggest bang for the buck for the sediment reduction to meet that requirement. So the problem is, though, with the stream restoration, it's not going to help flood mitigation. We're not storing anything additionally. We're not holding anything back. So I have a hard time. I know we have to meet this requirement. And I know a stream restoration is a great BMP, but it does nothing to move us forward to achieving capital projects. But the, the one, th the one tie-in you have, so Ithan Valley Creek Park, that Ithan Valley Park, that is strictly a stream owned by the township. Um, we've always talked about Cowan Park not just for stream bank restoration, but as a stormwater management facility, whether it be subsurface, uh, that's a lot more complicated because you lose the park, you put in your system, then you get a park back. So it's got a lot more pieces to it. And, um, you know, the West Wayne Preserve, you remember a few years ago, we saw plans on that from 
uh, the Delaware Valley Riverkeeper. Warren Philippone Park and Bo Connor Park were both called out in the Chagrin Valley Engineers Report of 2011, as well as the CH2M uh, township-wide study for flood mitigation. So there, there may be ways you could do stream bank restoration and flood mitigation. Now, there, there are two parts of one project, but it's just so, it's something to think about uh, moving forward. But you, you, you do have a few that conceivably we could go to the commissioners and ask to move on right away. Ithan, because Ithan Valley, Ithan Creek Park does not have any other recreation activity. So if you go to Bo Connor or Philippone, you're going to be affecting ball fields, playgrounds, and all that. The creek is, is the creek. It's a it's a stocked trout creek, so we, we have to be careful of what we're doing. But it's I don't think it's as involved from a community standpoint, a youth group standpoint. I, I mean, I understand in the, the resolution initially too. MS4 was was part of uh, our, our charge here as far as. Uh, one of the items that we needed to address, though it was, of course, on a much smaller scale at the time that it was passed. Um, so the basins, uh, the stream restoration, West Wayne Preserve, and th that's already had some work uh, and some thought put into it initially. Um, the Villanova improvements are a done deal, and that doesn't cost the township anything. Then there's two more left on their list. Um, one is uh, the Radwin. Uh, apartments, which is a very, a very small portion of the Cobbs Creek watershed, and uh, we talked about that, that that could be substantially scaled back. We don't have to do as much as was shown in Meliora uh, uh, plan there. Um, and then the last one, the uh, Lincoln Financial, I mean, whether we could even do that or not is, is a question. and. Coming in at 3.1 million for only 12 percent of uh, our, our goal here in the PRP, it, it seems awfully steep. And as we were just talking about a little earlier, Steve, uh, you know, investigating um, uh, redes you know, redevelopment and development in the township that might, in part, uh, help meet the PRP, just like Villanova has, I mean, maybe not projects on that scale, but collectively some other smaller projects may, may help us here and we may not need to do something as large and expensive as, as the Lincoln Financial. So I, I, would, I would say that the, the basins, the stream restoration, the West Wayne, uh, maybe figure those into the budget over the next five years, but, but then those other couple of item, items, the Radwin, in the Cobbs Creek and uh, the Lincoln Financial, maybe we find other ways to address those. And do we have to be that <clears throat> specific? Like, could we allocate a percentage for, I mean, if you look at the basin retrofits, they're definitely the biggest bang for the buck, but I guess the question is, how much do you gain flood mitigation for it? They're a big bang for the buck, but until you look at each one, you won't know if you're really gonna gain that extra volume, plus it's not on property that we own and that could really, that could slow things down tremendously. I think the the one basin that you you might be able to get some actual additional storage from is the uh, Cornerstone Basin on Brimar Avenue. That's huge. It's got a low flow channel. It it pretty much sor short circuits through most storms. The only problem is it's not affecting a lot of people. There's the Blue Route and and the cornerstone development is somewhat away from that. And then the rest, you know, that's Haverford Township or Mark down below. Um, you, whatever this committee wants to do, you know, so I'm here to assist you to do to however you would like to do it. If you want to do it on a percentage basis, uh, that's fine. It, whatever your recommendation is, that's your recommendation. Uh, the the five-year plans I do, I'd like to try to list specific projects, but to be honest, we don't know, other than the few that we know we could start because they're, well, conceivably, I, when I say I know we could start going through the Board of Commissioners, and when you're touching a park, it's it's going to get vetted through the, the Park and Rec Board, too, so there, there are some channels to go through. Uh, however you wish to do it, we, we can do it. Uh, if you tell me what you want, I'll put it together in a spreadsheet. Uh, I would ask, you know, 
my recommendation would be we still include our other projects that we have on the books. You, you know, the, well, be them small or large, um, I think they should be represented. Again, that's just a suggestion. It's whatever this board wishes to do. Yeah, I think the, that makes sense to keep the ones that we initially had already uh, put forward. And then I think initially with the MS4 work, I would look at the basin retrofits first because those are the least likely to receive any grant money, outside grant money, and they're going to have to come out of our pockets. And like you said, there, there's a lot of um, payoff for those ones. And um, it may take time to do them, so maybe that sooner rather than later focusing on those is a good idea because it's not about having to have something done equally in each year. It's just having to have this met within the five years. So if we, even if we start moving those forward in the first year and they don't get done until the third year, they're still within that five-year frame. Uh, and we, we were speaking informally. Uh, honestly, with this amount of projects and the lag time in the first year, I don't know that it's necessarily feasible that we're going to get done all these in a five-year span. Just to think that you might be doing 20 projects in a year or 15 projects in a year is, is tough in its own right, but the fact that you're going to lose a lot of that first year in whatever negotiations taking place. So I, uh, you know, I, I've talked with the manager and Melior, and I, I think we're going to have to sit down with DEP and show them that we have a plan. We're serious. We've gone to the board. We spent a lot of money coming up with this, but we, we don't know that we can feasibly get it done in five years. Then the flip side is people tell me don't worry about it and just move along with your plan. But I, I'm, well, I'm not comfortable with that. I, 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 I think like we that. would we're we're in a situation that's similar to everyone else. And if we're making our good faith effort, we're I'm I'm sure we'll get an extension if it's required. And, and that's and I would like to as opposed to just do it going as we go. I would really like to sit with DEP and, and get that either right in writing or verbally where they say we understand you do have a plan you're going to meet because in the second period cycle we're catching up at that point right the first five years is the toughest because you haven't done any of this before yeah but honestly we we're, we're not catching up we're in the lead no one else is positioned as well as we are no, so I mean, i'm confident that whatever it is that we do standpoint. it will it will make it will make what yeah. the dep is looking for satisfied because at this point we're one of the few people who has a legitimate plan that actually has some funding behind it that is go going to be able to move forward and at least make a good dent in, in the requirements. So right. I think we're really well positioned because of the study that we did and by getting Melioria in, in when we did, I think um, we really set ourselves up for success on this. And I, I would say for right now, all the basin retrofits would be the first thing to, um, because obviously once we start looking at them, some may, may or may not work, some may work better than others, but until we actually move move those up to the top of the list, we won't even have answers on that. And I think that's the first thing I'd want to know is where the beach basin retrofits are going to be successful, whether or not it's a, a relationship with the owner or it's just the topography or groundwater issues. We, we're, at this point, we're just still at the concept stage. So I would like to move those together as a group to um, look at feasibility. So. Um I guess back to the other point, what I meant is in the next five-year cycle, we're better poised because you have projects in the pipeline. We're not starting from scratch. We're, we're moving. Uh, if you, if the board, if it would so please the board, since I do not have Patricia here tonight, if you, uh, I'm going to ask you a couple times at the, at when we're done number five, just very specifically, so A, I know what to put in the minutes, but B, I know what to put together for you. So if, if, what, if what do you guys think about the um, the retrofits? Is that something that makes sense to you? I, I yeah. think that makes sense, yeah. and, and that's one where we need to start things moving. So I guess we would be looking to budget for feasibility analysis. Well, we no longer are responsible for the budget. Per no, but se. he's <laughs> ask, asking for recommendations from us for what should be budgeted, what items, and I guess I would budget not the construction costs but the feasibility analysis is that what makes sense here the, the upfront work uh, any sort of legal work and uh, coordination efforts right. feasibility well and that's what I was thinking could we do a percentage and say I mean I'm just picking a number like 40 percent of the budget 
is going to go for whatever it takes to move forward towards these basin retrofits. Because I think Steve's right. We're just going to get to a point we're not going to be able to, well, to we afford do, it all. We do have money that's already been built up. And then we have the money that's annual. So you're saying 40% of the next year's annual fees. Yes. That sounds reasonable to me. I don't know. Do you want to weigh in on that? Because we're at 20% for operation and maintenance, right? Steve, I think it was 20%. And, that, and that's how you had it. But the, the, the swim act can recommend however you wish to move forward on that. And, and we do need to take in consideration, so to speak, what's, what's in the bank. Right, we have uh, close to three million or two point some million, including if Banbury Francis Way moves forward or no, because that was already no, not not including, not including any that. projects, so not we, including we, that. We need okay. to. What I would do is, if if the committee gave me a percentage of whether it be annual revenue, we could I could put a spreadsheet together on that, and then I could subtract out of what is saved, so to speak, for whatever ban could becomes of Banbury, Maplewood outfall, Highview outfall. Uh, I hate to say this, we have another stormwater project uh, with a culvert and wing walls and a retaining wall on Roberts Road. We're getting price proposals for that, for design. I do not have a cost for construction or design at this point, but it's, it's, uh, it's something that has to be done because the the end wall is also the retaining wall for Roberts Road over the culvert. So it's not something that can really wait a long time. The wing wall where there's a storm pipe that's just basically fallen out is on somebody's front yard. That's not so big, but the, the, uh, the street retaining wall, that, that definitely concerns me. Well, could we have gotten credit for doing the infiltration facility for Banbury Francis Way as one of the PRPs? Part of that we will get credit for that absolutely yeah, we, we, i just didn't did i miss it on the list they didn't they didn't put it on because they knew it was in flux too so it did not okay. go on but if the board went forward with it that would be absolutely and that's a big hit and that's a, i was just going to say that the subsurface infiltration is a big hit for dep so to do to do go forward with that project we could get that back on the list okay now i'm looking at the cost the construction costs for the basin retrofits and they fit within that 40 percent so i would rather uh, amend my suggestion and say we take the 40 percent and and move forward with those is that until okay. we hit a wall if something can't happen then we then we drop it but if they can move forward we move forward all the way through the retrofit is that 40 percent of the annual revenue yes because it's less than 800 what is it here it's 736 and then would we do a percentage of them for other PRPs for rain gardens? Um, stream I would wait for the next year on that, and just just do the basin retrofit. Yeah, aside. because that okay. gives us thirty percent of our almost thirty percent, twenty eight percent of our reduction. And that could be the longest. If we lead. get twenty eight percent of yeah. our reduction, that'd be pretty that's good. Huge. They would be pretty impressed, I think. And then if you add in the other projects like the the Villanova project and the um, B Banbury Francis that gets us even above so right. i think we have a very good um path to follow if we go in that direction well and those are longer lead items too from a legal standpoint to work with the hoas and get in there yeah. where the stream restoration on properties or parks that we own we've got a little more flexibility yeah, and because I think we can get we in and do that at any be, point. we may be pleasantly surprised and it may that may go quite well the folks in haymarket would love to do something with their basin so I met with them a few times. I don't know if they would be thrilled on this, but uh, you know, owning a basin is a liability and it's a maintenance cost for an HOA. And so, to be able for us to do the work and then we'd maintain it that, that after should, that, I would think yeah, they would be pretty excited about that it. That should be a pretty good yeah. carrot I'm hoping for some. Well, so, so do I we have to make a motion? I have 40% of the <laughs> annual budget. So far I have 40% of the annual budget will go towards base and retrofits in year one and however long that carries out. And then for projects, so to speak, that are on the books, would you want me to subtract that from what is in the fund right now? You're, let, let, uh, let's say Banbury in its current capacity, I don't know what's gonna happen, say Banbury in its current capacity, Highview, Maplewood, uh, Roberts Road, 
whatever else would would you have me take it out of the my recommendation is if you're able to, to do the PRP with annual revenue and still do flood mitigation and maintenance out of what you have saved so to speak that might not be a bad way to go yeah and then we should still have some additional funds if um, we look at 40% for this right we'll still have what were our other percentages you remember we had 20% for um, maintenance and repairs okay that, that's for the new resolution right uh, yes that, that's the allotment yeah. that was the allotment 20 percent so now you're at 60 percent and then we'll I guess have some fees for Meloria too because they had fees for two years in their proposal and then we're gonna have so we don't I mean they have some numbers in but we don't know what our are truly what our legal fees are gonna be um, would so a 40 percent of the annual revenue is for base and retrofits, 20% is for maintenance and repair. Would a second tier of projects be township property, i.e. Ithan Valley Park, Ithan Valley, Ithan Creek Park, and then West Wayne, because they're the I least would, impactful. I would rather any other funds be still directed towards um, what we identified as flood control type projects, but to put uh, a heavy emphasis on those that can do double duty so that we're meeting both uh, requirements at the same time. We're not, you're not going to get that for stream restoration, though. No, that's why I'm saying not to allocate oh, to stream okay. at this yeah. time. And those would be the highest probably likelihood for grant opportunities, even right. if we can't cover the entire thing, maybe a portion. So right. maybe that's where we um, start looking. Yeah, I think they'd be more likely to get funding for that. So, Regina, you're, you're talking about essentially year one. one. Though, though Steve will have to put together the yeah, five I need, year Right, that's true. You do uh, have to that's put. That's what I'm asking. Like, so okay, I see what you're saying. Year. Second year. Um, uh, and the West Wayne Preserve can function as both. It, 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 it has a decent drainage area. Yeah, I would it. say West Wayne Preserve is a good second year. Because it can function as both, as you said. say we're, we're going to go out five years so my, my thought would be if, I, if I'm hearing the committee right so basically we're going to go through as many base and retrofits as we can in whatever year one year two then uh, we're using that same 40 percent for the West Wayne preserves of the world and perhaps you know whether it's year four or five or then we looking at the stream bed restorations in the Ithan Creek as well as Warren Philippone. One question, uh, we, we have uh, a portion that we put towards maintenance work, but we, we're gonna need to increase probably the maintenance as we're taking on these projects. We so have a lot of over the time, we haven't touched yet from those reports. But, but, but even answer. for the basins themselves, over time, we're going to have to build uh, that percentage upward in order just to handle the work that we're putting in place to keep it right, to maintained. What I found is that it's the first couple of years is the most intense because the plants are smallest and you need to go in there and keep out the invasives. But when you look at the picture of, of some of the ones Maloria showed us, like East Whiteland, when they're mature, it's much easier to maintain because the, the plants that you want and that are growing there that you planted are larger, healthier, and stronger, but uh, no different than Clem McCrone Park. So we have three rain gardens and you know, the, the plants that are in there are this big. So you have to go in and, and pull out the, the native grasses or the invasive grasses that have gone in there. So the way I look at it on a graph is maintenance is much more intense the first couple of years as the, as the plants that you've planted get more established, your maintenance actually goes down. And there's ways to do this. There's a lot of firms now are specializing in going in and taking care of your rain garden. So, but as, to Regina's point, that's a whole different cost. We need to build that in. Too. And I think over this five-year period, it's probably going to be flat because as we build more, it will get to be that there's just more facilities so the ones that we established early on they may reduce their their amount but 
we're still adding over this five-year period. So what's a percentage that we think we would need to... I, I think having someone come in who's specialized, at least in this period, makes the most sense because if you establish it well, then you don't have replacement costs. So do you have any idea, Steve, I, what kind of budget we're looking at? I do because I did get some prices for Clem McCrone. So if, it, if it's okay with the committee, I'll look at that based on the size of what we have at Clem McCrone and kind of extrapolate that out for these basins. Um, and it does two things. They can teach our, like part of the component is always to teach our staff. So we, we have a limited amount of staff, but it'd be good for our folks to know. I mean, like when I look at one of those rain gardens right off the bat, very hard for me to discern what's supposed to be there and what's not. They will teach that to us. They will have, you know, our parks maintenance guys work with them so they understand. But I, I agree with Regina. I think we should get a, you know, I'll come up with some price which I'll convert to a percentage that will show, you know, years one, two, three as maintenance for whatever basins we move forward. And, and that'll have to carry through the five year program. And then for the non MS4 components, uh, we had recommended. Uh, projects uh, previously back in May um, that were uh, there was the, the rails the, was one the, the, the expanded SEPTA uh, project was one of them uh, there was a uh, the, uh, South Wayne Avenue uh, in Co the, the connection to that the connection basin, to the basin. And that um, also will give us MS4 credit because that will show that area being treated okay. as well, and right, for sediment reduction. And uh, Radnor Trail. There's Radnor Trail. And then the other one that, that's been mentioned but has been mentioned is perhaps not feasible is uh, the West uh, Avenue of Green Streets. What, I, based on what we had T&M do and what Dan did, so when we were talking about the North Wayne Field Basin, Dan estimated, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, that roughly there was 19,000 cubic feet of sediment in the basin. So I was looking upstream to see what, what could offset that, you know, basically cleaning out that. Uh, the West Avenue Green Streets, which ran from AT&T to roughly Francis, was like 23,000 cubic feet. Dan did make very special note that the project is scalable in that you can make it larger or smaller. I, I, we do have some considerations there. So the sanitary sewer hat I wear uh, always makes me nervous when I'm bringing thousands and thousands of gallons of water uh, right next to an existing sewer line. Uh, in, in some informal talks with AT&T, I don't know what they have underground there, but I know that might be an issue. Uh, the manager has talked about that. Maybe he knows more than I do. But Commissioner Curley at the last meeting voted and, and the commissioners uh, approved it to spend, you know, to put in the budget $50,000 to have a firm or firms look upstream of the North Wayne Field Basin to look at mitigation projects versus the cleaning. And there's no reason why those projects could not do the double duty of sediment reduction as well as flood reduction. So moving forward on all our projects, we're going to be looking for some type of sediment load reduction in w whatever we do. I don't know how, I don't know the magnitude of it, but that's definitely going to be a component. I think that's, everybody wants that across the board. So, so as far as bringing the budget discussion, you know, to some so we can summarize for you. Uh, so it's looking like for the Are we looking at maybe cutting out the, um, the porous pavement project at the top of the list in favor of finding other uh, concurrent projects or uh, coupled projects? My, my recommendation would be to show it at the end of the five-year plan I don't know us, that, do we have enough money to include it? <laughs> well, it would be at the end, but it's going to give us time to replace it, is what I'm saying. We, I don't, 
So we're not necessarily going to fit it within our five-year budget. You know, I would put this at year five, and then over the next five years, we look for ways to either reduce that drastically or eliminate it and get more cost-effective projects in its place. But for now, this is the best we have as far as we're at 98.3 percent. So we, we do know that this is somewhat fluid and that the, the plan has always been that once we get rolling with this, that other projects will come up that maybe can supplant these like these very costly ones when we have time. So Meloria was under a time crunch to get this done. And basically we were laying out, you know, aerial maps, looking at a lot of things. And when you look in that basin, that property just hits you in the head with the amount of impervious to it, but it's expensive. So given time, we can look deeper into maybe seven smaller projects that cost less and get us the same amount of sediment load reduction. I would show it only because this is what, this is what we have that meets 98.3% of our requirements. And I would put it at the very end, knowing that next year we might find projects that start reducing that right off the bat. But if we put this even at the end, we have to have enough money for it if we're putting it in our five year. And that may impact decisions we're making as far as percentages and what we can move forward with flood control and so forth. Is there, is there any alternative? I, I know we have a plan and we have to fund it, but do we have to fund it from our five-year budget through well, the township I, I'm process? I'm just going by the DEP who says that your, this PRP must be five years, which happens to fit into the fact that we do five-year capital planning budgets every year. Now, if we go talk, to, and I don't know if this would happen, if we talk to DEP, like what I could do, I mean, what I would suggest is we put year five is design of this. Yeah, that's what I would be so, comfortable with. Yeah. And like 2.8 million go into the next DEP yeah. five year cycle. Again, it's that makes it's more sense, Steve. Yeah, that's a good time. that's a good way to do it. I, I like that. Well, because really, too, looking at the budget, if you take out that one Lincoln Financial, it's reasonable, and you could do that in five years. It's just that one project. That's a deal breaker because for five years, half a million dollars each. You're talking two and a half, three million dollars. You could cover everything but that. Well, for the MS4, yeah, was, we were discussing earlier, Steve. I mean that that's 12 percent of your sediment load reduction, but it's over 40 percent of the budget. I mean, just out of out of whack with. Uh, well, it's, it's three times <laughs> higher cost per impervious acre than anything else. I'm sorry, one's 39,000, but it's $100,000 per acre impervious to manage. And the basins are in the low teens, and even West Wayne Preserve is 40. So that's definitely one we have to target to replace somehow. And that, that sounds reasonable that we don't have the whole construction cost in the, in the five years. And so. Um. I think that's a happy medium, and then we work towards uh, more cost-effective means to reduce that price if we do end up going there, maybe on a smaller scale. So what, what I have right now is that each year of the five-year budget, 40% of the annual revenue will be for basic retrofits until we're done all the basic retrofits. 20 cents will, 20, I'm sorry, 20% 20 will still stay for maintenance and repair. Uh, once the base and retrofits are completed, we would start with the West Wayne Preserve. Um, we're going to include a cost to maintain those basins, which is going to chew up some money, there's no doubt. Um, we have existing projects extent that the Swim Act has recommended, the expanded SEPTA, the Radnor Trails, the South Wayne Avenue connection to the middle school sewer, storm sewer basin, West Avenue Green Streets of some type, um. I guess what we have to think about, though, green streets in the in that watershed it would be sufficient for me. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be on that location. If that location doesn't pan out, there may be others. So West Avenue goes all the way out to Eagle, and that still all drains down there. So maybe we get away from <coughs> AT and T and all that and cross over Banbury and, and do something on west up there. 
So just backing into this, though, if we're at, whether it's basin retrofit or the stream restoration or constructed wetlands, starting with, obviously, the basin retrofit, that's 40%, so you're 20% maintenance and repairs, and you figure about 10% are miscellaneous, whether it's malorious fee to do permitting or miscellaneous, you're only talking, what, 30% left for the capital improvements, really. And that's going to cover the four that we recommended, plus possibly Banbury Francis Way. Include the money you have in the bank too, right? It's going to take pretty much. You said it's going to take all that. So, are we comfortable though, as a committee, saying forty percent for like basically the basin retrofit, stream restoration, PRP, and then thirty percent is capital, the other capital improvements? Because that's what's all that's left. Certainly for right. now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, all that's I, left. I think that's the I think best that's we can do. That's a good plan for for now, um, and of course, it. Steve said it's fluid. It it, it it's going to change. I try to, just so you know, I try to smooth it out a little bit because what happens in these five years, like all of a sudden, like year four, everything comes together. So it's like a million, a million, a million, four million. So I, I will move things around a little bit just to, to try to make it somewhat more consistent each year. I mean, not to the dollar, but to within a couple hundred thousand dollars, I try to smooth it out a little. So it's somewhat consistent, like, you know, 1.2 million, 1.5 million somewhere in there but I, I can do that with the various because honestly SEPTA is still so far off at this point uh, we're still having trouble we, we still can't get on the property yet so Steve I think those are good numbers to use for this year at, at this time next year we may be looking at something entirely different so absolutely it's certainly a good start and I, I thank the committee for all your input I'll put this together uh, I'm going to send it to you but I also have to send it to the finance director so it's it's going to go right on in your recommendations quick question with that 10 percent like for permitting will that also be like the video cleaning are we still doing that i have so much we have enough maintenance work to do from the original as much as i'd love to do it every year i just don't think we could actually keep up with it and there's also a cost we have the if you remember there's the the culverts we did the study on and that was two years ago. They haven't gotten any better in the last two years. So uh, I'll be walking underneath them next week again because I think there's a couple that we might want to push up. Uh, Malin Road is a big concern of mine. Uh, there's one other. So I, I would recommend and request respectfully that we take that money and, and put it towards some of the immediate maintenance needs and then also, if I may ask, we had would, a really Would that large fall under the maintenance portion of our contract then? I mean, of our percentages? I, I, I guess that's, if that's how you folks want to, yeah, I mean, if you see that as maintenance, you know, replacing a culvert, that's, that's fine. Or just lining it or whatever it takes. And my, my next question is, we always have a pretty sizable number for uh, rebates. I think we had like twenty or $30,000. And we're only doing like a, at most a thousand dollars in a year. Would it be all right if I reduce that and put that money towards some of the other projects? Actually, I, w I think we should keep it and increase the amount that we're willing to reimburse people because that um, if people can start taking on rain gardens, that counts also towards some of these other requirements. So um, before we change it, we should have a discussion about maybe revamping the rebate amounts That's did you do it did we really have a thousand I don't know that I think the first year we might have but last year I think we had one uh, or this year I think we've had one and I, I will tell you that definitely falls under the purview of the swim act that rebate program so that's a great project if, if the swim act wants to take that on to, to look at that again and we could go to the board with how how we're going to do that and maybe through some additional advertising uh, we yeah have we might need to really promote it we really haven't. We did for that first year when it was new, but we jumped right in with the township assessment and budgets, and it just... Yeah, I think now's the time. kind of sat, right. Now's the time. I will leave that alone, and I'll leave that on question. Thank you for your uh, input, and I will uh, put this all together in a spreadsheet. We don't need to make a motion on that, do we? I think it's pretty much what it is. I, I heard you. I think we're okay. Okay, good. <laughs> so... Uh, We'll move on to uh, Banbury Francis Windsor uh, project. And uh, 
Madam Chair, if I may, I, I gave you some handouts. If, if it would be all right if I could come up to the table, I think that might make it a little easier for you folks. Sure, yes, please do. talking in the microphone. I'm one of them. Yeah. Ian, you can, oh, thank you. Can you zoom in, Ian, please? Keep going if you can. Bigger, bigger. That's good, thank you. So I, I, these are various handouts that uh, TNM had given us. And uh, one that I wanted to show the, the SWIMAC was, so the first page was a spreadsheet from way back which showed uh, a five-year, one-hour event. And this is the preliminary plan for that five-year, one-hour event. And you can see it's still pretty intrusive uh, to the neighborhood. The night of the meeting, what we had talked about with the neighbors, what I had described to them, which they found acceptable, was basically to do a project in this area which is the right of way of Banbury down to the intersection of Francis and that triangle. Uh, we had told them about three projects. We, we haven't done design on them because we haven't been authorized to spend money on that. As of now, until the board gives us direction, TNM has stopped and they're just, you know, we're just catching up on their bills. So if you look at this and you look at this, I. I don't know that we could manage a five-year storm in there, in that area. I do know one thing, and I should have brought the drainage area maps. If I remember correctly, there's about seven acres that drains down, comes down 30. And when you stand there in a sizable storm, there is a considerable amount of runoff that comes eastbound 30 and makes a left onto Banbury. Uh, several months ago, I met with the Pendai drainage folks. They have no problem with us putting inlets in and managing their stormwater. So uh, we, we could, as part of the project, now I don't, know the, I don't know what that equates to in a frequency storm. One of the ideas we could do is to uh, capture the runoff on Lancaster Avenue before it gets to Banbury. So I'm a fan of, try, of not necessarily putting all the inlets in the low spot because you have a tendency to get ponding and they get clogged. So I'd like to capture some runoff up here, and then we could pipe it down to perhaps this triangle to use it. Now, in this area that we described to the residents, you still have the right of way itself to use of the street. Of, and it's, all, it's not, not residential whatsoever. Uh, it's the bank, it's Wawa, you know, and the, uh, the triangle itself. So we could do what we can in there. Uh, the gas company, Pico, is due to run new gas line down there. Uh, it's, an, it's a January project. And I've asked them to hug the one side of the street to get them out of our way for whatever we do and whatever it is that we do if, we'll, if we do it. Um, so I, I just wanted to, to point some of these things out. Uh, the night of the meeting, this is the area it was prescribed. There, uh, it was on the agenda, I told the SWIMAC, asking the Board of Commissioners for some direction on Banbury. That was tabled until the next meeting. So we're hoping to get direction, as, you know, go, don't go, do a modified version, do a five year, do a 10 year, do, do whatever, work within this area. And really that's gonna come from the Board of Commissioners. We're gonna make suggestions. I know uh, Heather Gill was in the audience the other night. Unfortunately, it got tabled. Uh, so hopefully you'll be back at the next meeting. So I, I just wanted to show, so this was a five year and it, it's a pretty considerable project, but the part of the area that we would be using is untouched here. If you look at it in this part of the project, and I don't see why we can't use some of this. Um, So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. If you go to the Steve, I just had a quick question while you still have that there. Um, for the uh, that's that that would handle the five-year storm. You're saying yes, that to now, if we were to put inlets in along Route 30, I would not want to see them on Route 30 itself. I would rather turn the corner and pick it up on Banbury because that way we don't 
inadvertently collect stormwater that's not already contributing to the flooding. So whatever's bypassed from that corner and continues down Route 30, let it go. But whatever turns the corner ends up on Banbury, pick that up then. Very, very little bypasses. Uh, Everything from Route 30 is going down Banbury? On this lane. On this go. On the westbound. Yeah. Yes, westbound lane heading east to Banbury. Uh, I haven't had a chance to observe that, so that's uh, why. I can just tell you anecdotally from observance, you're in the high 90 percentage of what turns that corner right there. It's, it's really the grade of the road and the intersection. I don't know when either was repaved at one point. Well, when we put in um, the accessible ramps there, who, was that T Radnor Township or was that PennDOT? PennDOT did all that. So I think maybe it's, it warrants a discussion with PennDOT to say they created this issue and it they be should the be maybe partnering with us to do this rather than looking at us to do it for them. So I, I think we could get them. So the drainage folks are like, great, take our stormwater. That's wonderful. Uh, There's the construction people with their money. <laughs> the, the maintenance folks, we, we've actually had some, uh, we've had some talks with them. And I think we, that's somewhere where we could partner to a point on whether it be material or equipment or they take it to a certain spot. But in, because if we take that flow for them, they, get, they can get MS4 credit for it. And I do think, though, whatever, one, two, or three inlets on 30, we'd still need them on Banbury, too. So it would also be in here. Uh, the, it's a small drainage area. Like I said, it's only like seven acres that my, come to that point. My only concern is I feel like we're having trouble vetting the stormwater that's there now. So now we're going to be taking on more stormwater. Well, that's why I said putting them around the corner. But Steve was saying it doesn't matter. It all gets there now anyhow. So we're not adding any. Is you, th that was my so question. So that's originally part of that drainage area when they did this design. I, I it was them, included. I made the, they didn't. At first, they didn't include it. it was, Okay. My original instruction was include this. They right. didn't. And I said, you need to go back and include it because this is a distinct part of the problem. So that was included for this plan right here? I believe so. Okay. Yes. So that five-year storm accounts for the PennDOT um, area it draining. Should. I don't have Steve, here, but I, it should. Steve, you're saying that is a five-year storm plan, or according you think to, it might make a five-year storm well, plan? According to TM, this will do it at uh, 69000 cubic feet of storage, five-year, one-hour event. And that's what this one is. Um, 69,000 plus or minus cubic feet of storage. It's just in the center, in the triangle? No, that's, that that's everywhere. Uh, that's, that's right. All, this. all that. All this. Now, Steve, this did not account for what we asked for, which was to, to look at a lower outfall pipe that right. would go through the potential easement. So if we did do that, conceivably. That was never, that was ne those numbers were never run for Some us. Some of this could go away, right? This could be a smaller system. Yeah, I'd like to see work. what those numbers are. That, but, wait, 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 but say that, that again? But that I'm, shows a pipe outletting through the Baskin Robbins property. That's the 30 inch CMP that comes out. That's our that's our existing pipe. That's the existing with the 40 outlet. It's, it's the Duncan Hubley design that was in there from way back. That goes through in the Wawa area, right? So, uh, but then that that uh, sheet that you're looking at there, it there does look like there's uh, what what's the pipe on I think the I think Paige is upper right, right hand this, side of the this sheet? This does take the lower invert. At least visually, it looks like that. Maybe now, they didn't I, run. I maybe they didn't run the numbers like that. But, but uh, I believe Rich said this does take. In one of the emails I forward to the, I think Regina had asked the question, "What about the lower invert?" And when I posed it to Rich, he said, "This is the one plan that did, and you get the five-year storm out of it." And lower invert, that's that easement we would need then. Correct. Well, it's not much because a lot of this goes through there. But the thought was. The system was limited before because the invert of the pipe was higher, so everything was up. So by using a lower invert, we got more storage. And if I remember correctly, in response to Regina's question, this plan did use that, and that's still the five-year event. Which just goes to show you it still takes quite a bit of square footage to, to take care of that event.
So I, ju I just wanted to give these things to the SWIM Act to let you know, just some background information. I know you want to discuss it tonight, so I thought I'd, I'd just put that out there for you. Thank you, Ian. So our original memo to the board was a 10-year, and then they had a discussion, and then they bumped it up. I think Don Curley kind of drove that and wanted a 25-year storm to address, correct? I don't because I think that was the, the that was the initial but, vote was for 25 years. But but the the board approved a 25 year. To okay. Yes. I mean, in my opinion, to do a five year to go through all this, just I don't. I feel like that's just not enough. It's it's just not worth it. I, I feel like we. Need I don't at think least a that plan year. had the lower invert. I don't think it ever considered that. We've not seen the results of lowering the invert and going deeper with the system and pulling it more vertical and less horizontal right because the impacts there are still pretty excessive i i, I, I really would like to see the models and the and the data because it's just not adding up is but it I, adding up in your mind well i thought that there was a limitation i thought i remember tnm saying that where we would need that easement behind the baskin robbins there that they could only go down so far and that they couldn't go any deeper I thought that was part of the problem originally. No, I think the, the pipe is lower there, so they could go in at a lower depth, but I, they never ran those numbers. I'm a little confused why they couldn't just give us that data. But uh, so I, I think what needs to happen though is that I, I guess the board has not uh, approved Steve or other staff to, to go investigate uh, that easement. I think that needs to happened I, I don't know that the detail of the in, the initial scope said yes or no easements I don't know that it did but regardless I think the bigger issue is will the Board of Commissioners go forward with a plan that's less invasive to the neighbors and reduces the maybe 15 year storm or something like that rather than the original 25 intent because clearly if we want to in, in, you know scale it back that's not going to meet the 25 year storm even with a lower invert well and the other thing too which i found interesting in the various scenarios that they gave us uh, uh, earlier this summer is that for the 25 year storm all the seepage beds were in the middle of windsor where for the 5 and 10 and 15 i think they were the three years they were within the right of way but outside of the roadway which in my mind is more invasive because if it's in the road even if there's trees where the tree roots kind of come up to the edge there's been so much work done in the past i doubt they're going to lose any trees if they do the work in the road and that was yeah i a, was a little confused I that think was, was for a 25 year storm was so that to avoidance me, of a particular pipe or something was that the reason that was less invasive that? the 25 year storm than the other storms because they, you're correct they started to go up windsor with the concrete storage uh, in the stream in the street which called for the relocation of the sanitary sewer and a water main. Um, that, which, that was part of that up Windsor. Which you had said in the past, though, was aged and would be a good time. We, I mean, we have to, a, we have to a, do it all. We have a lot of aged sewer. Um, this is the one we ha I had it televised when all this came about. It's by no means our worst sewer. It's old terracotta, so it's, it never hurts to replace old vitrified clay pipe. You know, there's no doubt. Well, I guess um, my concern here is, okay, even by adding inlets along Route 30, we're not changing anything. That water gets there regardless. So we could save the money and let it flow over the, no, over the drive. What, but, what I was talking about was a different project altogether. So in using that area prescribed by the red cloud, you're not going to get that five-year storm. So that could be a modified project where you take the water from Lancaster Avenue, and some of the immediate surface water and that's it because to work within what we talked about with those residents is very small area you're not going to be able to you know to do a five-year storm so, so you're saying rather than handle the five-year let's do a one or a two-year a very reduced cost and footprint is that your recommendation if you remember in the one email i sent you folks was i said i'm not a fan of this because really you're backing into something you're saying, here is an area I have, what can I do? As opposed to saying, we want to manage this event. 
we're going at it in a different fashion. You're saying you have X square feet, get whatever volume you can get in that square footage, and whatever it is, it is. When, in your scenario, would we be keeping the existing basin, uh, underground storage basin and intact and not modifying it and coupling this other system with that? Correct, because that would be a really low cost project. What we told the residents was we weren't, they were happy if we stayed within that red cloud. And staying in that red cloud, really the most storage area you get is the triangle down at the intersection. So th that's, that's what you're working with. Not that you can't get some storage in Banbury, but you're not going to get a huge amount. So, like so, I say, so that would be added to the existing storage that's already there. Right. So you have the one system that's, you know, we clean and maintain and it still works. And we have another system, whether it is independent of that, which it very well could be. Now, they're all still going to the same outlet, so that's an issue. But like I say, you're really backing into it. And, and this is my personal opinion of, of North Wainfield Basin. There was a specific area they were going to do work in. They put a basin in, and it handled you know, what it handled, whereas you're doing the same thing here. You're not saying, let's attack and manage a storm, you're saying you have, I'll make up a number, you know, 50,000 square feet, get whatever volume you can get, manage what you can manage. Like Regina said, I know that storm water, I know that runoff is going there, so I might as well manage it. I don't know how much more I can. I don't know if I can take what's coming down Banbury. I don't know if I can take what's coming down Windsor, because the drainage area is considerably more. At that point, the system, you know, is moot once it gets overrun. So no different than the five-year system that showed there. In a 10-year storm, you know, that system is not doing a lot. If what we could work out in that little triangle manages a one or two-year storm, which is good because of the most common events, but in a big storm, it's not providing any benefit whatsoever. And that's my concern. I'm trying, I think we're... Well, we're that, that storm occurs. That one-year storm, it floods there. So you would be handling that frequent flooding. I, I don't know that that would, I'd have to, we have to run the numbers to see if that handles a one year event. So I guess I, I would be curious to see how that would shake out because if we could also provide water quality in that same situation, then all of that area that is going into the system would be considered as um, sediment reduction as well. You're gonna get subsurface storage, you're gonna get infiltration, we had great infiltration rates in the area. You're gonna get infiltration most likely the above ground portion is going to be some type of a rain garden, right? Some type of a BMP of that sort. So you're going to get some credit, you know, in that respect on both ends. Well, Isn't the other thing is too, we would make use of the existing system rather than replace it. So could, that, well, that's a cost savings. Because we told the folks we wouldn't go out of that area and that, that's out of that area. So. so is it completely off the table that we can't stay out of this area? Because here's... No, Here's this, this my was, concern is Heather, that this was just a meeting. So it's the board of commissioners who are going to tell us you can, you can't. So these were all suggestions and conjecture at a meeting with the okay. residents. But in the end, the board of commissioners is going to give us our marching orders as to how we go. So I, mean, I don't know that anything's off the table. Here's my concern. Should we have included the residents earlier? We probably should have. But at this point, I just think we can find a way to work together, but it sets a bad precedent if we're not going to do stormwater projects, if the residents say, well, we don't want it here. Nobody wants it here. I've lived right off Conestoga for the last two years with all the construction. Nobody likes it. So I'm hesitant. I think we can find a happy median, but I'm hesitant to say that we can't go outside this little bubble because we will never get a stormwater project done because it's always going to be near somebody's house. I don't disagree Heather, I, with I, that. I hear what you're saying, but I don't necessarily agree with it because in for instance, if you were to come into South Wayne and say you're going to put a project in front of the firehouse and in that area, I can't imagine anyone's going to oppose it because that is a dangerous situation. And so it's... But that's not we, someone's house, though. That's that a firehouse. That road was closed an entire summer, and I don't even know what went on there. The whole For an entire summer, it was closed, and no one complained a word. The, the people who are complaining here have have reason to complain is that they were going to be really um, removing all their trees and that's counterproductive to the but how, to the whole storm how water is the 25-year removing the trees because the, the that's plan? what was presented to them Heather I can't say how it is but that was presented to them 
But I think that's misleading because looking at the plan, the seepage bed for the 25-year storm that goes up Windsor is completely within the roadway. And in fact, there are utilities on other side of this maybe that there wouldn't are, touch Maybe any there trees. are utility relocations required that would impact the trees. I don't know the reasoning behind it. All I know is that's what they were told. And I think we have to, I'm not worried about setting precedent here. I'm worried well, about I, doing I the right thing. <laughs> I'm worried about doing the right thing with our tax dollars to get the most m for our money in the best way possible for all of our residents. I really, I, I don't care if, if we, if, if we turns out we made a mistake and we correct it, that's a lot better than it but turns out is, we made a mistake and continue on a path. But how is this a mistake? Path. We're worried. I mean, in lieu of all the hurricanes that have happened down south, it's not unheard of. And I've seen flooding and pictures at that intersection that are extremely dangerous. So in my mind, I know it's a big disturbance for the residents, but it's also a big disturbance if there's some kid on a bike who's going through three feet of water in a rainstorm. And I know trees are important. I want to save trees. I don't want to take down trees. But how can I say to a resident, especially at that corner right there, that severely floods, that the residents up Windsor don't want to lose two trees? So we're not going to that, do. That's not the. That's not the, the, that's the, not the way. But that's what it's saying. You're but saying I to don't, them. That I don't agree that that's the case. What I feel is when this project was scoped, there was a there was a project put on the table, and the way it's moved forward without input has gone in a direction that doesn't really make sense. I can't say I would support the 25 year but, storm in this location. I don't think but it's why warranted. Why don't you support that? I never did. That's not our recommendation that we made to the board. I never supported a 25 year storm here. I think a 15 or even down to a 10 would be reasonable for that kind of money that we're spending. But if you can get a two or a five year storm in there for a significantly reduced cost where we continue to use what's already in place, but then I we can take that money somewhere else and do another project. Because I don't it's think not, it's a significant cost. We, are, we have finite expenditures. So, so we're, whatever we spend here, we don't spend, spend somewhere else. So for a five, well, the, and the other thing that we went with this project was because it helped flooding locally and downstream. So nothing is But at that time, downstream. we didn't know that the pipe that connects to this system is a small pipe and it cannot be modified. So we there's no help that. downstream, Steve, is that? It's nominal, if any. That really, that detail of a study wasn't done. So that wasn't part of We learned of that scope. as part of this project. Right. That was not part of the scope of this project, was to, to study the impact. We know that we're getting some volume reduction, so that's a help. I don't know that we're going to make a huge impact. C can I the ask? Pe the peak won't be modified. Okay. It's just that the, o the overall volume, because if we can infiltrate, right. that's and, just less And we well. do have good infiltration rates. So, is it the wish of the Stormwater Committee to make a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners? Do you want to do that? Do you want to make it in a memo? Do you want to do it by a vote? And I will put that in my memo that goes to them. Yeah, well, I, I would like some it. answers to what, how, like the the plan that you're that you brought up. How much storage does I, that and I, provide? I'll have something for the board meeting, but I won't have something. This topic is going to come up before your next meeting. Because if it's not going to handle even a one-year or two-year yeah. storm, I, I wouldn't want to say it until we run some numbers, honestly. From and just ballpark, just looking at that and what you've told me, is it really worth going through all that for a one or two-year storm? And, I and mean, honestly, as opposed to having storage beds that come up a little bit further and they're in the middle of the road and they're not touching trees, they're not touching sidewalks. And you have to look at the, the cost benefit. Of the road. So we knew what, you know, whatever, 1.2 million was going to get us. I don't know the cost of, of what this other storm management will be. So if it's very expensive to, to capture and manage a very small storm, you start to lose some of the benefit. Why would we want to take that on with PennDOT? You know, and, and we don't have it's to. not we, a big, it doesn't sound like it's a big bang for the buck to we do can, it. We can let that water roll around the curve and we can pick it up right as it hits Banbury. That's not a problem. But I guess what I was talking about, if depending on the size of the storm, you know, you know the rough cost for a 25-year, one-hour event to manage that. So we have to look at what will the cost be for a one or a two, and where does that fall within there? And let's face it, none of this work is inexpensive. You're working in the street. Everything is select fill. There's single lane mill and overlays. There's Utility relocation, so Pico is going to move one of their lines already. That's no big deal. We're in good shape on Banbury. Uh, 
we have the, the triangle, which we own, which can become a rain guard and storage beneath it. So for the Board of Commissioners meeting, I'm going to have to have some type of scenarios. They're going to be very high level, maybe with some rough costs and, and to see what we can get. But I won't have anything for you folks. I'll gladly share what I give the board with the SWIM Act. So if you want to review it and come to the meeting, because yeah, I, I, I see there's a different difference of opinions here. Yeah, so. I, I feel that, I mean, right now it's flooding from what I've heard on the order of a one year storm and if you're only going to be taking care of a one or two year storm I, I don't think it's worth putting the money into it it's going to be more money than it's worth that our main focus in in this project to begin with was was a flooding at, at the intersection a public safety matter and unless you can significantly mitigate that maybe a 10-year storm or better I, I i don't see being worth spending the dollars I don't know. I, I think there's a happy medium where we don't go as far up Windsor, but that we could do a 15 year storm. I, I really do. And I know the construction is not desirable for residents, but even the 25 year storm from the plan that I saw for TNM, they're not taking down any trees. It's completely what, what was middle. shown to us was completely different than what was shown to the residents as far as the impacts. We were not told that it was going to take a two year construction period. They were told that. So somehow yeah, no, there's a Nobody disconnect. ever told them a two-year construction period. They, they, I think they extrapolated that, but we told them it was, it was a season. It was a year, a, a construction season, but it was never a two-year period. That was never the intent or thought. I think they, they built upon that and figured, oh, it could be two years. So if you, I guess if you look at it, if you start in June and you finish in March, you're in two different years, but it's not a two-year period. It's not open in front of your driveway for the entire period. No. And we, we actually so went what, through that. Steve, what is your realistic assumption as far as the impacts? Well, from what we explained to folks, you're, you're basically going curb to curb as you go up Windsor. Make no doubt about that. Between the utility relocations of the uh, water and the sanitary sewer and then the storage units, you're pretty much curb to curb. What uh, John, I think I believe I sent it to the Swim Act, John Hosback or Arborist went through tree by tree. Yeah, yes, some trees would go, but he actually showed me, I was concerned there were some sizable trees right up against the curb line. And the way he explained it to me was, those trees roots are not deep into the street. You're not gonna really affect that specific tree. Some, some would be because they were actually in the way of things we know the ones in those, that island and up on the bank are going to have to go, but he actually said they should go. So yes, were some residents going to have their trees affected? I think w one of the proper the property that's by all means the most affected is the one the Guthleens used to live in. They they were actually one of the impetus. They they came to their commissioner and they came to board meetings. They have moved since, but the folks that live in there that right of way goes pretty far back on their lawn, and. They're, they're out of out of any single resident. I think they're the most affected by the construction. Now, it'll all be put back, and it'll look beautiful when we're done. But you know, they're getting construction through about a third of their front yard. Um, so I'll have some scenarios for the board of commissioners. I can you include one that impacts less by reducing that um, elevation of that alpha Oh, definitely, pipe. we're gonna discuss that. that could create a big difference. And I believe that's what that five-year scenario was. Because you had asked the I, question. I don't think that ever was run for us, that number. Uh, you had asked the question in an email, and I had posed it to Rich, and I had sent you that plan, and Rich said, this is the one plan where we looked at that but for he, the five-year. But I don't year. know that he actually lowered the pipe for that. He kept it at that same elevation. No, I believe he did, on based on your question. I'll find out again. Yeah, because that, that could make a difference if, if that's not the case. So, um, if there's no consensus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run some real uh, high-level sketches. Uh, that'll be for the Board of Commissioners. I will definitely share that with the SWIM Act. And could, could we, t I mean, I think we I think would we rather a see vote. a 15-year storm, I, yeah, if we could do at but least not a with the big impacts. It just, like Heather was saying, it didn't seem to make sense that it was kind of all over the place. We want to see the minimal impacts with a 10 to 15-year storm. 
Well, this I is think 15. I, was say, I don't know if I would go for 10, but if I could see if 15, 15 years, 15, but like that would reduce be, the impacts That as would much be a, a nice hybrid to say, all right, we really want to get the best bang for the buck, the best for flood mitigation, least disturbance. We're willing to work with the residents. But anything left in 15 years, I mean, honestly, at this point, that's an intersection that floods. We haven't had a heavy rain like that 2013 year in a while, and it's coming. It's, My first I think it's going to be here in the next couple of years, and I would not be comfortable saying, well, we're only going to do a five-year storm because we don't want to lose a tree. I don't want to lose a tree. I don't want them to lose a tree. I also don't want anyone getting flooded either, and that's no, the, the my top priority. The, the one the thing is the cost telling. is going up significantly because of all these utility relocations and so forth. I would like to avoid those high construction costs and still provide a, a worthwhile project, if that's possible. Because and that, that's the that tough thing. reserves our money to do something upstream well, of there or somewhere else. The utilities, else. the way they run, you, you're very hard pressed to try to get storage. You're gonna to have to move them to the side. Uh, the aqua water line, they're in our right of way. My thought would be we go to them and say, you're in our right of way, you need to move. You know, maybe that's a freebie, maybe. Uh, but all the scenarios you're, the, the WMAC is talking about, I can't act on, we, we need the board to say, this is the way we're gonna go because that's spending money, that's spending more money in a different direction. We're not authorized to do that. So I, I don't disagree with you at all on, on a lot of these different scenarios, but I can't direct T&M to run those different things at this point in time. That's why we're gonna, that's why the memo is to the Board of Commissioners stating do you, do you want to continue the project as as designed? Do you want to go in the small area that we talked to the residents about? Or do you want to do something else? And something else is a 1, a 2, a 5, a 10, a 15, a 20, whatever it may be. It's wide open. But the board, you know, they're, they're the only ones who can direct us to do that. Let me ask you this. So looking at the scenario and the one, I don't know, I'm sure you've seen the plan that shows the seepage beds coming up the middle of Windsor. If that was to go from a 25 to a 15, it sounded like you just said, you're still gonna have to relocate sewer and you're still gonna have to relocate water the way the existing utilities are. So if you're going to have to do that, whether it's a 15 year storm or a 25 year storm, my recommendation is you might as well do the 25 because you're gonna get the storage. I mean, if we could minimize it, and it, let's just say a 15 year storm, we wouldn't have to relocate all the utilities. Then I would say, okay, that makes less sense. It's less construction, less moving utilities. But if it's not gonna matter if it's a 15 or 20 or 25 year storm, because you're gonna have to relocate utilities, you might as well either can the project or go forward with the 25 year and storm. And it might mean that you just stop shorter so you don't go as far up Windsor. That, that could be part of it. So you see there's a connection. He has a storage area pipe, storage area pipe, storage area, maybe, you know, X amount of those storage areas gets removed, and therefore that's that much less utility you have to uh, relocate. And, and you probably could do that. You're probably right, Steve, because, well, look, it looks like that the, the sewer is at the top of Windsor is kind of off to one side, one side, and it stays on. Oh, no, it doesn't. It's right up the middle. Yeah, it's that's right the problem. Up, that's the, the problem. It's right up the middle. And then you have the water line. So you don't have, like, a clear area where you can say, here, here's where right. we can put these uh, sizable units in. Because I, I had concern with what Rich originally proposed. They were, I've seen them all over and they're very common, but they're the small plastic, you know, basically they're assembled on the site and they have clean out ports. But in reality, when you look at that, you have to hope that everything settles on the bottom and that you can get something in there. Whereas if there's a concrete vault, of some sort, for lack of a better term, you can get a mobile dredging and pumping to go in there. These smaller uh, Lego type crates, they're very restrictive as far as clean out. I have a little concern, not one year, not five years, but 10 or 15 years down the road, what, what happens to them? Because although they've been installed, we don't have a real long history of them around here. The, I mean, they're installed up at our Drossen. They're using a lot of parking lots. And I've seen that in the last five or 10 years. It's the longevity, you know, say what you will about North Wayne Field Basin. It doesn't even have a lot of access, but it's 48 inch diameter pipe. A person or machine or something can get in there. I, I mean, I, I've, I kind of gave what I thought. I'm just curious 
I'm willing to go to a consensus to a 15 year if we feel like we can, because right now I think that's really important to come to some sort of recommendation if we all can kind of converge to the end to provide the board something as opposed to this sitting another month and then like it has been. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed that uh, TNM isn't providing some, uh, you know, without direction and without additional funds, some additional alternatives when they saw that their proposal fell completely flat when, when revealed to the neighborhood. I mean, I don't know why they're not stepping in and throwing some uh, different scenarios in because they've already got the models set up. I'll be talking to Rich tomorrow. That's, that's not a problem, but uh, I don't know how much they'll do for free. But honestly, so this is, to me, one of the pitfalls. We, we take away, as opposed to starting with a blank slate, when you pull off of the CH2M study very specifically, the RFP said, CH2M says this will work from a very high level, design this. And we saw what happened. It wasn't quite so easy. But there was no creative ability because the RFP, my, my preferred method is, we have a problem here. What is your suggestion to manage a storm, a 25-year, one-hour event, to here? Not to what the other consultant said. We, we lose that. Oh, don't get me wrong. What CH2M did is a very good tool, but if we limit ourselves to what they suggested, so there's, I'm looking at four engineers, three civils, myself a fourth, if there was a single problem and we each went into a room by ourselves to solve it, I'm gonna bet you there's gonna be like four or five very different means of solving it because we all have a different perspective. Nobody would be wrong, nobody would be right, we would just be different. So this project was based on you know, one engineer's version, and we found out that the other engineer had a hard time taking it from 50,000 feet to the ground. And that, that's where I think we need to be cautious when we move forward with the CH2M report to put all our eggs in that basket all the time. But in a way, I mean, if somebody came to my firm and they gave us a, a jumping off point, I would hope that they would look a little bit outside the box. Like I would, I would expect, ex I would expect, I would expect that. it too. If somebody said, I'm gonna start here and I see there's a problem, I'm not just gonna keep running with the problem and not solving it. I was a little no. disappointed to see that, I understand that they did not come back and say, okay, here's where we started with CH2M, but I think scenario B and C would work better for you and we've looked a little bit into us, what would you like us to do? And they never gave us that opportunity. Yeah, and somewhat I, rigid. I, I, I kind of, ex I, I'm a little disappointed, honestly, how that was, that never came about. And I think they should have, because I think it was a hefty budget for this. So and I think also, we made it clear when we were um, putting this project forth and selecting a consultant that this is a community that is going to want to be involved in the process. And that was embedded in the uh, selection process, too. And so they should have known from day one that Radnor Township is not going to just, you know, whatever they slap on the table, say, rubber stamp it. And so I'm, I am very disappointed in that regard. So can I also, ask the committee? Steve, well, yes, sir. being very uh, honest about it, the uh, T&M, after the listening to the residents, should have come back to you and said, look, we have ideas that can help fix this. I, I don't disagree with you, Mr. Bush. Did they? I, I don't, no, they did not. Uh, no. Yeah, Pretty much left it at that meeting was they, they knew they were to stop. So if I could, so I'm going to, I'll provide something to the commissioners. I won't have it for your next meeting, but I'll have it before the commissioner's meeting, and I will provide that to SWIMAC uh, based on this little area, which will give you some idea of magnitude. And then if we go to the commissioners, they have every, and like I say, my third option was, you know, some other method, and that could be what, you know, Heather's speaking of, a 15-year storm or a 20-year storm, if that works for the committee. So presented to the board will be one scenario is to go forward with what we have. So right now would that, be that either, was in the memo. So either move forward with the current design. I just want to write this the down. The other scenario was this is what we told the residents. So we staying would, within the red cloud area. Right. We said we would look at that. We right. didn't say that and, was. And we were very, very, I was very specific to say that we can talk about this but it's the Board of Commissioners who authorizes us. So we can speak about what we want at a residence meeting, and obviously 
our commissioners take very seriously what our residents say. I mean, that, that's near and dear to their heart. They're going to listen to what our residents say, as they should. But I can't speak for the commissioners at that meeting and say, oh, this is what we're going to do. I, I think they were looking for that. And even though we had a commissioner there, he's one commissioner, not, not seven. So, so that three, was a discussion. So the three scenarios are move forward with the current design for the 25 year, work within the red clouded area, and then possibly change from a 25 to a 15 year storm event. All right, I left it open. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that yeah. correct? The three scenarios? Yeah. Really, that's what it's down to. Or, well, or four, I left the third one in the memo as don't do anything, do something else, you know, whether it be from the, uh, a recommendation from the SWIM Act, but that could be, you know, infinite. Do a one year, a two year, a five year, a 10 year, a 15, a 20. Well, let me well, without you. having knowledge of what we can do within the area you encircled. I'll have something for the board. It's I just don't have it for yeah, you. Yeah, so we may find out that you can do a good amount in that area or we may find out you're doing next to nothing. But without that information, we can't even speak intelligently about but, what that. But you do that's see the magnitude of a five year storm. You see the magnitude of the Yeah, impact. we're still a little bit confused as to how that when that much storage is present, we're only handling a five-year storm. So I'm not sure why that is. I mean, I have to go by, you know. Do you have any of their calculations, any of I their numbers? I have their tables on storage. And, you know, I mean, I can get them. We own I think them, you should get all of that because something just doesn't seem to add up. Does it to you as well? When you look at that plan... Scenario two, and you're only getting a five-year storm, and you're really all over the place. Well, I think the reason they might be getting a five-year storm because I think some of the beds are not super deep. I, I, I remember him telling us that because of either utilities. 69,000 is the storage for the... 69,000. Yep. Right. That seems like a lot. It seems like a lot. It seems like a lot for that area. So let me ask this. Maybe they're overestimating their flows. That's all I'm asking. What, what would our board be comfortable doing? If the, would we maybe recommend to say we would like to see what a 15-year gets us? Is that something we could agree on to send forth to the board? Although we've got four scenarios and they can present, Steve can present all four. But the, the problem is this, you pointed it out earlier, that what they were showing for like the different storms, like the impacts seem to be worse for the smaller storms. I don't understand why that right. is. And it doesn't make any sense. Right, for the five-year storm, up. they put them in between trees back way off the road. So you would be ripping up sidewalk and trees, but for the 25-year storm, it's well, all... In the road. I don't think there well, maybe, is any sidewalk maybe we there. Say or that, uh, what, driveways, trees, maybe whatever. Maybe we say stay in the, in the courtway. Well, that's what they did for the 25-year storm. That's why, why everyone was upset for a 25-year storm. I never understood because you were in the direct center of the cartway, and you wouldn't be touching uh, so, trees. Just maybe something doesn't add up. We want the reduced amount of impacts. Not necessarily, it doesn't, I don't know whether staying in the cartway reduces the impacts or not. But having having the lowest possible elevation connection could reduce uh, a lot of this by having a deeper storage area i'm just confused as to why it, it looks so invasive for just a five-year storm it just doesn't seem to ma make sense does it make sense to you I, i'm questioning it that's why i always like the 25-year storm because to me it had the most storage it was the most economical and it was the least it, invasive but it doesn't seem to make sense that that's the case right I agree. That's why I don't want to do the five-year storm. It does. Something's not right. Your storm should look like a minimal impact. Right. And it doesn't. Well, the reason they might have, for the five-year storm, they might have taken it out of the road and put it still within the right-of-way, but back on people's grass yards or front yards, is so then you wouldn't do the utilities, is that you wouldn't have to relocate the sewer or the water. Did they give us a cost inferential for that, for the different scenarios? I thought... At for some construction. point they did, yes. Oh, here, we do have something here. Right, so the difference in cost for a five-year storm is for cubic foot of storage is $7.23. But for the 25-year, it's only $8.40. Well, not even per cubic, just the overall cost is only an additional 200000 Right, it's, it's not that It doesn't make sense. And I thought when I asked them they were here, did that 25-year storm, because that was a scenario in the middle of the road, which meant utility relocation, did that 800,000 include that? And he said yes. 
So if that's in addition, that's only $200,000 between the 10 and 25 year storm and you're relocating? It doesn't make sense. I don't know if I believe the numbers. There was a 1.35 million num number thrown about too. So um, I'm not seeing Yeah, I would there, rather see it like a true cost estimate. Where Where is the backup data bef behind these numbers? You know, I'd like to see what the numbers are coming from. Steve, we, we really could use a lot more information from them because it, we're I, not understanding what we're seeing. I, I can get some detail, but I think the real, the crux is, I understand what you want and I, and I don't disagree, but um, the real issue is we're going to the board with this and we're gonna have to, my suggestion is we make some type of recommendation, whether, I don't know if they're gonna act on it or if they're gonna say, come back with stuff, I, I really don't know. Steve, and it could be that same thing. Steve, the, the problem they have, even the board, if they knew what this group knows, and I, I'm going to exclude myself, but if they knew, they can't make a decision because they don't have enough data. Now, somebody's going to make a decision. Well, they, they could say, they could authorize us, hi, hello, they could authorize us to go back and evaluate other items. I just don't have that ability right now. But let me ask you this. What would it take to get the four of us in front of TMM to ask the questions directly with your staff perhaps sitting there? What would that I, take? I can bring TMM to the next meeting. That's not a problem. No, I, you know, separate from that. We'd have to do it separately because you, you've got a time constraint. But, you, but you, we've gotten to the point. You could have a subcommittee, but you can't have a quorum in that subcommittee. So you can only have all right, so three. Two, two of you. I'm willing to meet because I'm I'll someone who I, wants this to move forward. So I'll see I'll, what I can set up for. If you tell me what two, I'll, I'll work with those two and uh, try I'm to set something up with Rich for next week. You can even do it over, over the phone. We can do a go-to meeting or something. It's not a problem. But the problem is this, if we're asking questions and not getting the answers, because I don't, I don't know, you know, that they're going to be able to answer us on the spot. So we need to be able to confirm that they're going to give us the answers. Well, probably the easiest thing would be email me your questions, specific questions, and I'll provide them to T&M, and then we talk, and they, ha they should have answers at that time. That way, we're not wasting two meetings. It seems to me that a, a go-to meeting could be a really good way of looking at it, since these guys are up in Bethlehem. Uh, you know, Makes sense to me, too, because really, it's just a matter of. And also, they can pull out their drawings, and they can put it up on the screen, and say, they have their say computer the available, is. right. And if, if you get me your question, say, I don't know, Monday, and we meet, however we meet, Wednesday or Thursday, we, we should have a productive meeting. We, we've got to get to a point where there's a unanimous consent that this is the direction we're going to, we should go, this is why, this is how we sell it to the neighborhood. Because really, that's what the bottom line is. Right now, there's a lot of objections because nobody really understands. Nobody in the board really understands what they're asking. I, I think the neighborhood, understood the impact. I think some of that, I, sim I think some folks thought it was gonna be worse than what was put forth. Like I say, it's not a two year project. I, I agree. Um, I think that that was, that was a perception that was out uh, there. During and, that meeting, there was no one standing up and saying, look, this is not gonna be so bad. Well, what I told everybody was I planned on, I had sent emails earlier, I planned on building into the contract you know, while we have this road torn up, you're going to be able to drive to your house at the end of every day and every morning. You're going to get out. And when they proceed up the road, you're now out of it. You're going to go in and out of your driveway. It's short-term issues. But the very specific in the contract was you can't just say, hey, we're done for the day, and we happen to stop in front of Regina's driveway, and you can't go in. That's not the case with the project. We, that was going to be very – they were very specific items for access – to and from their driveways, emergency services. Now, we always tell everybody in any construction project, there's times during the middle of the day we're right in front of your house. That's when we're doing any kind of a sewer project. That happens, but it wasn't like you weren't going to have access. We, we had very specific methods that we're going to write into the contract clauses that you had to do that. 
you know, uh, everything is backfilled. You can drive on the two-way modified, temporary paving. The benefit of the project was if you want to look at it when it's all said and done, you get new curbs and a new paved road, you know. All right, so are we going to try and go for the two of you to, uh, to do a, a go-to-meeting and... and uh, if it's a go-to-meeting like that, why can't we have everyone? If, you from what the solicitor has told me, if you want to create a subcommittee, that's Well, we fine. had a meeting similar to that for the MS4. So why was that not a problem what, when Melioria presented to us? I don't understand. We had a go-to-meeting with the entire committee with Melioria was to get their presentation on the MS4. And I don't, th there's no problem with yeah, that. I don't recall. So there's really, we're not, it's not as All if. All I know is the solicitor, as of like the last month, we, we were on another committee, we talked about subcommittees. And whether that occurred back then, what I was told was you cannot have a quorum at a subcommittee. And it's actually, a subcommittee is supposed to be advertised. But we wouldn't um, actually be taking any action, so. We're just an advisory board, so too. We're can, we, ha we have no authority. I, I, I will tell you this. Let me run it by the solicitor. That's, I, I can't answer for him. You, we could go back and forth all night. I don't. It's a presentation. I so. don't know the. Well, it's more than a presentation because you're, you're providing specific questions. It's well, a it's back the and same forth. thing with, we did with the MS4. So let me, let me ask the solicitor. I, we could go back and forth all night. I don't have those answers. I don't know what's right or wrong in that respect. I'll talk to him tomorrow. I just would like to know how we're going to proceed. All right, I will find out tomorrow. In the meantime, either way, send me your list of very specific questions. If we can't meet, I'll get answers. If we can meet, then all the better. I don't, I don't know that a, a meeting makes sense if only two people can be a part of it, because then we're at the same place where we're trying well, to explain the information find, to each other. Let me find that out. So if I spoke out of two, or if that is the case, I don't know. Let me, let me confirm that one way or the other. Okay. Um. So, uh, I guess we can, yeah, seeing as it's uh, 9.30, we'll try to wrap this up. Uh, I mean, in a moment here, maybe we can ask uh, Steve if he has any update on, on Highview. Um, but uh, stormwater ordinance, of course, probably needs a meeting unto itself. Yeah. Um, yep. So I, I don't really think we're going to get to anything else here on, on the agenda other than setting the, the next uh, meeting. <laughs> oh, well, when's the next meeting? Uh, I'll tell you. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. So the next meeting will be... Thursday, October 12th. Okay. Okay, then. Thursday, October 12th, the next meeting. And, and we'll be discussing that, the ordinance. All uh, right. We'll discuss the ordinance and we'll, we'll adjourn our meeting. Okay, great. believe just we will not be taking any action at that meeting just in case